Testing, one, two, three. Testing. Testing, one, two, three. Hi, you guys. I'm going to draw an owl today. So I hope you like it. For those of you that have never watched uh, me draw something before, this is a, a technique that I call pole drawing. And this is just going to be one big ass owl. Test four, five, six. Is that a uh, you're testing something, Robert? Just to see if I can see what you're saying. Can you guys hear me? Just type in a yes for me there if you can hear me. I never know when I set these things up whether I've got them set up properly or not. So I hope you can hear me. As I think you'll enjoy this more. <laughs> you can hear the uh, my computer going wild. Or is my volume too loud? You get used to it in a minute. I get to the point where I quit talking a lot. So my goal today is to add a whole pile of different colors here. Just to give this ex interesting texture of an owl. And this, all we're going to do is. You can hear outside noises. What outside noises? You can hear the fan. This, the fan. My computer goes crazy, but I'm in my basement, so there shouldn't be any outside noises. Try not to. Uh, I'll try not to talk too much on this session. I'll keep it simple. So the way this drawing's done, just so you understand, is what I do is I just apply a whole pile of different paints in the general areas of where I think they, they need to be. And then I do a lot of pulling of the paint into different areas to give the feeling of an owl. And it'll all make sense in a minute here as I start getting better at this. So. This is going to be one orange eyed owl.
extrusionism. Selling something there, Robert? What's extrusionism? Throwing out fancy, fancy words for drawing that I don't understand. The program I'm using is a program called Corel Draw, which is a fairly complex problem, and I use about 10% of it when I'm doing these drawings. And so a lot of a lot of people when No, I invented its purest art form. Okay, so tell me more. Keep talking. I can honestly say that I've never invented any art forms. I just play. And what I end up with in the end is hopefully a nice piece of art that people enjoy. So when I say it's pull art, that's what I'm doing right now. So all I actually do is I take a smudge tool and I smudge paints together. And then what I end up with, and end hopefully, of art it gives you a feeling that you're looking at an owl in the eye of an owl a close-up view and so the goal in the end that you end up with. A real close-up picture. <laughs> okay, Rob. Robert, I'll take a look. When I'm done drawing, I'll take a look and see what you have and what you invented. So as I'm drawing, I tend to stop talking whenever I get to a point where I have to concentrate a little bit on what I'm doing. But most of the time it's just, for me, I draw because it relaxes me. And if by chance I end up with something that looks really cool in the end, yahoo. If I don't, Then it goes away with all the other ones that I've ever painted and that I don't like. So I'm going to get to a real big nib here of smudging. So I can smudge stuff fairly quickly. So I pull 
the colors together to give a very quick, simple method of getting some feathers coming off of this bird. So mostly when I use this big smudge tool, all I'm trying to do is get some colors spread out to give me a little bit of a, a stylized, the start of the stylized owl. I fill in some of the spaces fairly quickly with the colors and then later on I'll come in with a, with a lighter one. So you can see the way these, these colors are sort of starting to pull up to fill in the different areas of the owl. We want this to all sort of in the end start to look like feathers and it'll take a little while to get to that stage as I just fill in some space at the moment with all the different colors. The nice thing about it is that you're not trying to get a single normal colors that you would find on an owl. It's just going to be a stylized type of thing but you can see how it nice bold colors from the few colors that I had on my canvas that I had put on and then you just start to pull them and you start to see some of the cool colors start to blend and you're right it does have a little bit of an Inuit look to it very bold Okay, so now you've got a little bit of an idea of what I'm attempting to do here. And now I'm going to go back down to a smaller brush. So you can see now I'm back to the smaller one. And now we're going to start to pull some of these different things up. Oh, the smudge has stopped. My bird can't catch up. So I'm just going to save this. Give it a chance to, to catch up. How do you spell owl? With an O. Woo! Okay. So that's just a quick save. And I'm going to go back to see what it's doing to me. Okay. That's what I wanted to see. So, so what I'm doing is as my mouse touches the color that I want to pull. So see that gray color there? That's when I start to touch the, the touch my button, the right button, and then I hold it down and it will pull as long as I'm dragging across the screen. And so that is how uh, you end up with the, the pull effect. 
So wherever you start pushing a button is a color that will start to pull across it. So there I started on the, the, the white, and there I started on the gray, and you can see the way each one of them starts to pull the different colors. So you can see how I'm starting to, to try and build some feather effects, or a little bit of a feather effect, if that's, I don't know if that's what I would call this, but we'll see how it turns out. So here's the feathers down the side of the, the bird. And now these, these are all the, the real cool different colors. And because we're trying to build the bird, I'm just going to start to, this would be your shoulder, and this is where, where the wings would start to be. But you can see how some of the cool colors start to, to pull through it. And I that's the, the thing that I really love at this, is that you can never duplicate exactly the same drawing, because it'll always end up different as you pull the different shapes down. And so what I'm using now is a, a 100 smudge tool. And you can see how it gives that real weird. And the question that you asked, Robert, is, um, yeah, they, they've, uh, some of these that I've drawn, I've had, um, I actually have some displayed in the restaurant here in Saskatoon, and uh, they are five feet by four feet. So you can blow them up very large and put them in. Like this was a restaurant that decided they wanted to, sh to display some of my artwork. So um, they asked me if, and on my gallery, I have the gallery that's on Fine, Fine Arts America. Um, I am not the kind of person who can sit in front of people and talk about my artwork. And so what I did is I have an, a contract with this company called Fine Arts America. And what they do is they display people's artwork, digital artwork, and then um, you can have it printed on almost anything. You can have it printed on a, uh, on a shower curtain, on a duvet cover. And so that I found very interesting and um, then I'm totally out of the picture as far as what I'm in, I have to do to be involved. What I do is up, I upload my picture um, with some of the details on it, and then you can buy it right from that, uh, that company. And so um, I think you can get bigger than the 5 by 7, but not, um, sorry, 5 feet by 4 feet. But uh, I don't know if they, uh, they do it at this company or not. But what I do is there's a, there's a, program that I call, that I use, it's called Picture, picture Perfect, and that Picture Perfect allows me to uh, expand these to different sizes, and so uh, I don't know how big, I've never tried to get one super huge, but Costco will, will do a lot of, uh, will print things off for you, and so that's a, that's a place if you want to get something done fairly cheaply, you can get it done in stretch canvas. No, oh, it's froze up on me again. You can hear my fan in the background going just, uh, yeah, picture perfect. Um, yeah, I guess you could make it into a into wallpaper if you wanted. Um, my computer is a water-cooled computer built by uh, Alienware. And so it's a gaming computer, and I purchased it. It's water-cooled, and it's specifically built to... Um, try and stay ahead of some of this uh, rendering that happens. And this rendering that I'm doing is fairly advanced and takes a lot of computing power simply because I'm pulling a lot of colors and it's it's working hard to stay ahead of it. So I have to be patient sometimes because I get too far ahead. And then it, uh, it has problems staying up, staying at the same speed that I move at. So... Now, 
for those of you that uh, have taken a look at an owl, one of the things that I found very cool as I taught high school art was how people, you'd talk to people, okay, let's draw owls or something like that. And then you would spend some time drawing an owl. And then the next time the, the students would go out and actually look at an owl, they would come back and say, you know, I never knew that an owl had this. And one of the, the or didn't, or I didn't know the owl's eyes were this way, or I didn't know the owl's beaks were that way. And, and what uh, art, one of the best things about art is it makes you look at things differently. And so one of the things that, uh, when I first started to draw, or paint, excuse me, um, I was painting evergreen trees. And most people draw evergreen trees. Um, they're smaller at the top, obviously, and they get bigger as you get closer to the, to the bottom of it. But they actually grow upwards. And most people draw their evergreen branches or boughs pointing downwards. And on most evergreen trees, they actually grow up. And so uh, it always amazes me that when you're painting trees and you're showing somebody how to paint the trees in the high school class, they'll say, oh, take a look. Uh, take a look. You're drawing those, those upside down. Uh, ever, evergreen trees don't grow that way and then the students will go look and the next day they'll come back and you say you know I've never really looked at a tree that close and I found the more drawing I do the more I find I'm I see things differently and so um, I did a picture for my wife of our garden and up until that point I hadn't really appreciated the garden a lot because I never looked so um, so you spend a lot of uh, a lot of times looking at things differently because the world is a beautiful place and the best artist in the world is mother nature oops got it screaming again sorry mom objects let's combine all the objects for that down So now we're just going to spend a little bit of time. And start to work on this eye a little bit. I have kind of a soft, soft edge to this pupil. So I'm going to pull some of these other colors in here try and mix some of the black in with the uh, uh, edge so it has a little bit more of an outline to it. And then recognizing the fact that across the top of this, we have ourselves the eye. And now I'm actually going to paint on a few different things here. So we want to have, it's too big, about a 10, no, about a 50, 50, Okay, let's go back to my smudge tools. And we've got about 100. Yeah, that'll do. So this is starting to look like either a real pissed off owl. The moment I put this 
really heavy eyebrow across the top, and it started to get all goofy. I find that uh, this style of painting, the iPad, I just completed a, um, one that I drew on my iPad, and on the iPad I can spend hours doing that because it's a stylist, and so it's a lot easier than this one. This one, uh, you tend to get fairly tired, like you said, using the mouse and trying to uh, get the details in the right place. This, this is much harder to control than the... Uh, than the stylist, obviously, because the stylist is one that we've all trained on and we all get used to some shit drawing on that. And so uh, we're not as efficient with this style. But as I do it more and more, I find I'm getting a little bit better at dealing with the, with the mouse, but it's still harder to control when, it, when you get down to the details. You do, um, you do have the ability, and this is something that I'll show you here in a second as I just touch this up. This is what I really like about being able to work on these type of pieces. So you can you can zoom in and then it allows you to repair. And because you're zoomed in, you have a lot more control over it. And so then some of the, the pieces that you know has to be in a certain area, like a lot of this is very freestyle and very, um, there's not anything that has to be in a certain spot. So you can sort of play with it a little bit, but uh, there are some things that you want in a certain location just to make it work. And so some of those things, you have to take the, the time to make sure you get them in the right spot. And that's when you zoom in to the details. And the eye, no matter what you do, on any animal that I've ever drawn, and that's... I used, I used to draw a lot of animals where I'm painting and like the real painting. I used to do a lot of those and spend a lot of time um, trying to get the feel of the animal and the eyes are always the things that once you get the eye correct, then you can, then you can give up on everything else it doesn't have to be perfect, but that eye is what makes it work and what makes it um, people just see the, the personality in an, in an animal when you just pull some of that stuff together. So so the eye is what makes it work. And so sometimes, like many drawings, like the stylus drawings, when I'm working on my iPad, I'll spend uh, as much time on it on the eyes as I will on the whole rest of the painting. And the moment you get that right, everything else just comes together very easily. And so all I'm trying to do now is just sort of pull these colors in a little bit to give it a little bit more. Some of the bold colors, black, which isn't, some people even argue with the black isn't a color. And they're right, it's not. But it does allow you to emphasize different parts of the, the animal. And it gets people's eyes drawn a certain way on, the, on an animal, so. So the other thing as you're drawing the the owl. Owls sort of have, they have the piece that goes around the eye, which is right in here around the eye. Then this is your shoulder. Normally, and they have this real heavy duty forehead that runs through the middle here, which is 
separate and gives it that that um, I don't know wise look I guess and again all I'm doing with uh, at the moment is just pulling the the colors up through the the middle of the drawing and blending some of the colors together to give you that that feeling like this being the beak and then over here you see how there isn't enough color so you're going to want to pull some of this color up into here just so it works with the rest of the animal and then I'm just going to continue to work on these feathers a little bit and you can see how it's starting to come together and starting to look a little bit more with the different colors as they're pulled together and you you sort of have to and this is this is one of the things that I talk to people when they're, they're trying to paint water or they're trying to paint clouds or something like that it's the same thing when you're, you're trying to when you're drawing feathers like I'm still using my 50 no my hundred uh, smudge tool and what I'll do is in a, in a second here I'll go down to a much smaller uh, smudge tool and that will uh, will give me again a little bit more detail so that was 50 so now I'm going to go down to 75 and then I'll go to 50 even smaller and so you can see how this will come out smaller so now I'm pulling smaller pieces and again it, it, it'll start to blend the colors together and give you that uh, psychedelic look that I really think is so cool and blends all the colors together so you can start to see some of the feathers and the, remember what I said the only thing you have to do is the color that you want to pull that's the last that's where you want to start pressing the button when you want to stop pulling you lift your finger off the button and it takes a little bit of getting used to but once you have that uh, once you get used to doing that then the color is starting to blend fairly well together and you don't really have to think about it so I don't now that I've been doing this type of drawing for a fair length of time now and I don't think so hard about when I'm holding the button down I just sort of keep pulling and I get what I want So, would you recognize this as an owl, or have I totally lost the bird, or would you look at it and say, yeah, that's an owl? Sometimes I get too, um, too psychedelic, and then it totally, you don't even end up with something that looks like what you're trying to create. And so that's part of when you go as abstract as this. I did a, did a drawing and I'd spent hours and hours on this drawing and I was so proud of it. And I, uh, I showed it to my son. He was about eight or nine at the time. And I said, so what do you think of this? And he goes, oh, that's beautiful. He says, uh, what is it? <laughs> and so that was a lesson for me very quickly that sometimes... Uh, yet too abstract and then people don't ever see don't see the same thing that you see as you're drawing so
And the other thing that I really enjoy about these type of drawings is that you start so primary when it comes to the way the drawing starts is it's so simple and it's just like okay here's an eye here's the beak and then you just keep pulling and you can just keep horsing around with it and just keep pulling stuff and sooner or later you get down to the point where hey I got myself a drawing and it looks half decent and there are some that I've done that I'm thinking oh I really like this and then there's some that I've done that I went oof I didn't like that at the end And I always uh, tend to play with it afterwards and end up with some very uh, strange finishing looks to them sometimes. The... Um, I did at one time do a whole series of paintings where I combined my watercolors with digital. And uh, some of those turned out really nice. And some of them, I don't think the two uh, mediums fit really well together. So sometimes I think it's a good idea to combine different mediums. And sometimes I find that um, the touch-ups I can do I skip back and forth between programs, so I'll, I'll skip into uh, like a photo retouch and actually change that. Like if I wanted to make this a warmer color because it's too cold or whatever, you could go in and you can actually mess around with that type of stuff. And uh, I've done that where you can go in and just change the whole look of it. Or like for instance, like this drawing, like if I went now to an effect and just used, this is the one I always show people. Like this is uh, called plastic, and what it will do is it just makes everything a different, uh, gives it a, a harsher feeling. And so you can see how that sort of became, it turned it into more of a plastic and a pull of different colors. And so it, it gives it a, a really neat feeling, but um, I tend to like to just play like this and get it to the point where I really like it. And then sometimes I can't find anything that would make it better than what I started with. And then there's other times where it just doesn't work, and so I have to go in and then really play with it to get it back. And there's like there's all sorts of different effects. The computer um, allows you to do a lot of different things. So um, so another effect like you can use art strokes. So if you wanted to make this, let's say, a palette knife. What it will do is it'll just it'll take the whole thing and make it look like it was drawn with a palette knife, and so it just gives it a really fast, different picture, different look. And um, if you want to know what it looks like, just as far as the default setting goes, and so again, it's a different look, and it gives you the the, the idea. And those are just different art strokes. So if I wanted to go water watercolors, then this will actually adjust this to make it look a little bit more like a watercolor let's set it back to the default and then you see what it looks like now this will take a long time to set up so if it'll even do it come on computer fight for it okay so um the one you're talking about is a plastic one and you can you can really make the plastic one stand out. So the plastic one, uh, if you want to go depth, so you can see how you can uh, really make it stand out. And then the smoothness. So you can see how you can almost make it uh, pop off the screen a little bit at you. So you can push the smoothness way down, push this one way high, and then what it does is it just brings the 3D-ness, so it sort of pops off the page at you a little bit, and then it looks like it's it was done with a, a real thick brush. You can bring the highlights way down. Take some of the edges off it. 
And I kind of like that look sometimes. And all this is doing is just uh, mess, it, mess with the colors on it a little bit to soften it up. And then you can change your light direction. And so it gives it all sorts of different effects. But um, I find that uh, it pops off the page, gives you a different feeling, which is kind of cool. Okay, I'm going to go to a different smudge tool here. And I'm going to go to about 550. Now, I have to be really careful with this one because what this does is it just really bleeds the stuff together. So you have to pull fairly carefully because all I'm going to do is sort of fill some areas in here just because I'll come back and fix them up with a, a couple pulls over top of it. And it's just to sort of blend the, the bird's feathers together a little bit. Because they didn't like how separate they were. So all I'm doing now is sort of pulling some of these feathers together to give it a little bit of a... Putting some down on it. Okay, so that's a... That's a really soft, um, high blend. And then what I what you do is you come back in with the with the smaller little blend over top of it. So let's go back to the 50. So the 50, and then you just clean up some of these. So you see how it, it filled in the background, and so now I'm gonna just gonna pull it over top to give it that sharp edge again. And so all I was doing when I was putting that that smudge is sort of filling in the background and putting some of the feathers in behind. So that effect that you were talking about, like bringing out some of the 3D effects, um, this just gives a sharpness back to it that I took away with that smudge. But it allows me to... And I'm getting fairly close to being happy with what I got as I pull some of these colors over top of each other. And we're getting closer and closer to being done. So I hope you uh, you enjoyed this lesson on how to draw yourself an owl. And like any drawer and any drawing, if you like it enough, you put your signature on it. If you don't like it enough, you don't sign it. This one here, I think, turned out kind of interesting. So it's my my owl, and I hope people can still see that as an owl. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, and I'm going to put my signature down on it. And I'll do it with a 30 paintbrush. You see that little dot that went in there? So I'm going to zoom in there. Zoom in. I'll spend uh, another 15, 20 minutes just playing to try and refine some of the, the areas because you can see how some of this area in here is still, still smudgy. And so it needs just a, a couple pulls through it to make it kind of cool. And then, like I have done on all the other days, is I'm going to give you a quick lesson on playing, on, playing with the different colors and the different poles so there's grumpy owl so then we just save that I save that as my owl so save and 
then let's play with it. Let's put some. Uh, this one here, I, I always like these these uh, lens flares. I think they look so cool on a drawing. And so I want to reset this one. And I want to bring the lens flare into a different area. So like it in his eye. Maybe just up in the corner of his eye. In the corner of my eye. I need some gray in here. This is too dark. I mean, too, uh, too white. There should be some shadows in here. So now as I look at it, I notice that I need to get some smudging in here. Get some darker. Just to darken it up a little bit at the top edges. I'll have to play with that with a softer blend. Softer blend. Just sort of, you know how you have that a shadow that plays across the top of your eye? I think I don't like this. It's white across the top. I think it ruins it. better now let's try that effect again but I'm gonna to tone it way down so let's go to the camera and go lens flare and I don't want it to be pink I want it white so the white but it's a little bit too bright, so let's tone it way down. That's not enough. Brighter. There we go. So now we have the little light reflection in his eye. And then we have ourselves a bird. So save. So I hope you enjoyed this, you guys. And peace out. I'm gone.